What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Dermy Wormy. I'm coming at you with another video and we're continuing to actually discuss Doctor Who because the 60th anniversary special came and went like a fart in the wind, sitting at a 43% over on Rotten Tomatoes as of right now. And when it came to the Christmas special, The Church on Ruby Road, it's sitting at a 32% on Rotten Tomatoes outright. This, both of these episodes, uh, both of these events were basically farts. They didn't do anything to the actual brand. They didn't help bring it back. And it was a sign that RTD is gone. He, he's a hack. He's no longer the man that we once knew he was. He's no longer this great grand writer that he once was and helping implement the return to Doctor Who. He is now just a hack and a political propagandist, and the audiences know it. Even when you take a look at the ratings for both the 60th special and the Christmas special, audiences really didn't show up. The overnight ratings were horrendous, and when you broke down the actual consolidated viewership numbers, they weren't any better. Heck, I've shown it a couple of times the Christmas special was beat out by an episode from the 70s when there was less people in the world and was shown only once on TV. God, did... Nobody's here for this. Nobody cares about this and nobody wants to watch this show. So when you get Doctor Who showrunner confirms upcoming season to feature heavy focus on progressive messaging, when you see stuff like this, it just helps further represent it's all over. If you're not writing that in 2024, what on earth are you doing? It's at the forefront of the show. And when we get into his actual quotes, these quotes come from the actual Rolling Stones article, the same article in the same interview that he came out and said that the sonic screwdriver looked too much like a gun. That's why he made it the sonic butt plug now. But let's see what he actually had to say. At one point, pressed for his thoughts regarding actor Shudi Gatwa casting as the first black actor to ever portray the series titular hero proper actress joe martin previously appeared as the future incarnation of the time lord known as the fugitive doctor davies opined it's about time sometimes big old terrestrial and streaming shows can be slow machines to catch up with the world he explained and I'm getting older now, so you become one of those gatekeepers of television for want of a better word. And your job is then is to hold the gate open. Come on, everyone. Reinforcing Davies' argument, the affirmation Gatwa himself being jointly interviewed alongside the showrunner added that's what the show does. It evolves. It regenerates. I feel feel like it's about time and I'm here for all you damners out there. I'm not going anywhere. Well, when it comes to Shudi Gatwa, nobody's ever said that the doctor can't be portrayed by a black guy. That's not the argument here. The argument is you're just not the doctor. You don't have the range of the doctor. I mean, your first official outing, the most emotion you ever portrayed besides crying and being a little wimp was like, it, it, it was just you standing there, not having range, not having the gravity of what makes the doctor the doctor. You're you're just somebody else. You're not the doctor. I'm sorry. Nobody ever cared about your. Nobody cares about your race. Legitimately, when it comes to this, nobody cares about your race or your sexuality. We just you're you're not the doctor. That's what it boils down to. But when you come down to here, you you hear RTD say something very interesting, but kind of counterintuitive to a lot of stuff that we've been seeing so far. On the topic of personal identities, Davies then addressed the fact that both he and Gatwa were themselves queer, telling Spinwell that while many feared otherwise, their sexuality would have no undue or excessive influence on the season's storytelling. I don't walk around talking all day about being queer. And what's my queer energy today? Explained Davies. We're talking to people who live a queer life. So this is completely normal. And where I'm slightly amazed is that anyone finds this different. Come on, straight people. Come and find out. Well, this actually goes counterintuitive to something that happened in the actual 60th special. And let me pull it up real fast. Because when you come right over here... Doctor Who dives off the progressive deep end as latest special sees the doctor lectured on pronouns chastised for being male presenting. 
this is all sexual identity right here. This is all about identity politics, identity-based propaganda. Remember, the doctor got lectured on assuming the Meep's pronouns and then got chastised for being a male presenting Time Lord, even though he was just a female presenting Time Lord. And if my memory serves, every incarnation of the doctor is the same person, so he should still understand what it's like being a female presenting Time Lord. So. Okay, I guess queerness is not going to be a forefront, but it was. It it literally was. To this end, Gatwa then noted that while many have taken describing his version of the doctor as queer, he himself ha was reluctant to apply any human label to the doctor because they're an alien. You know what? This is actually decent because the doctor is not queer. The doctor is the doctor and he's a straight dude. He has kids. He has a daughter. So saying he's queer doesn't make sense, but you know what, you, you get the point though. From there, Spinwell noted, while Doctor Who had always been a relatively progressive show, Davies' upcoming run would lean particularly hard on such topics as evidenced by the introduction of Donna Noble's transgender child, the Doctor being chided over his pronoun usage and an upcoming episode serving as a metaphor for women's reproductive rights to which the showrunner exclaimed in turn, if you're not writing that in 2024, what on earth are you doing? I think our rights are in danger, he posited. I'm talking as someone who's lived through gay liberation all the way through the AIDS crisis, all the way through to the freedoms that we have now. I can see them spinning and being endangered, so there's no choice in this. And if the most exciting and entertaining action adventure show on television can also do that, I think that's wonderful. So you just said, kind of counter to what happened in the 60th anniversary, all about being gay, being trans in this moment, uh, pronouns usage. You just said that this is not going to be at the forefront. But then you said all your rights are being taken away while simultaneously connecting it to your sexuality, mentioning the politics. And yes, guys, the first episode of the brand new era of Doctor Who is all about abortion. It's titled Space Babies, and it's about abortion and women's reproductive rights. So... From the get-go, you say, we're not going to talk about our sexuality, but we're also going to be talking about politics at the forefront, propaganda, reproductive rights. I'm mentioning how I survived all this gay stuff, but now I think maybe because I feel my rights are in danger, I'm going to put it at the forefront of my show. I'm going to just keep pushing propaganda constantly at the forefront of my show. That's what they've been promising you for months now. Ever since when Doctor Who returned with the 60th, you had Shudigatwa come out here and say that they were going to have an episode based on his brand new race and episodes based on his very leftist liberal bubble. You had Millie Gibson come out here and promise that there will be more controversial elements because they're trying to attract a Gen Z audience and try to get them to walk away from TikTok. Not going to happen. This show has gone down a progressive, identitarian, intersectional deep dive okay that's what the show is and people can come out here and say the show was always pro uh, uh, show was always political the show was always woke and always focused in on these progressive politics but that's not what it used to do the show used to deal with political themes political uh, sensibilities and things that were more human by nature but what it never did in the past was chastise you for not agreeing with him, chastise you for not being on their side, chastise you for not being a certain political way. It used to just solely be about entertaining and maybe have a political theme thrown throughout it. Now it is solely propagandistic. Now it is solely all about the message. And that's what they're going to keep pushing. And that's what they're promising with the first episode literally being about abortion, with them promising episodes based on race, with them promising, outright promising, that even though my sexuality isn't that important, I do feel all my uh, rights are in danger and I need to be t talking about my progressive ideology and my progressive ideas at the forefront of my show that again nobody's watching
They're promising you that this next season will be the wokest, most intersectional, dr propagandistic, dripping show yet. And all we're going to see are these numbers continuing to trend downward, continuing to say nobody's watching it, nobody's coming to it, and the ratings are going to show that. But I'm going to leave it there, guys. Let me get you guys' thoughts on all this down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it out, friends, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for every time I put out a new video, go live, guys. And I'll see you all on the next one. Bye for now.